Welcome back to our conversation with State Auditor Diana DeZoglio. We're talking about her ballot question that would give her the power to fully audit the state legislature. Now, they, uh, they say you don't have that power, that it's illegal, uh, and they have been resistant to your efforts to do this prior to you filing the ballot question. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is... Uh, uh, the governor's position on some of the issues you're raising here. She's had her own uh, uh, concerns raised about her level or lack of transparency, uh, refusing to fully comply with the public records law, uh, refusing to make public donors to groups that, that help her, uh, making her travel schedule public. Do you have a, are those areas that you could see yourself uh, focusing on in an audit? So we conduct audits of the executive branch. The executive branch up to this point has been cooperating. I will say some entities have dragged their heels longer than we would have liked regarding getting us the documents that we've requested. For instance? From those uh, entities. For instance, we are in an audit of these non-disclosures right now. We've been trying to get some of the documentation regarding the NDAs and settlement agreements across state government uh, and a few of the uh, agencies recently have taken a little bit longer. Uh, that will be documented in the report when the report is released. Uh, but they have nonetheless operated in a spirit of cooperation and actually continue to cooperate with the audit. So that's my area of interest as the state auditors to make sure that the executive branch continues to cooperate. I've also long, John, uh, you know, talked about just the need for public records to be applied consistently the public records law. Uh, so as a legislator, I did, uh, you know, co-sponsor legislation to require that the legislature and the executive branch be subject to the same public records laws uh, that other state entities entities are subject to, uh, and I still support that. So you're not a fan of some of the ways the governor conducts her business, are you? I, I hope that the governor's offices continue to comply with our audits. That is my concern. Like I said, okay. there has been a little bit more heel dragging than I would like to see. Okay. And I hope that, uh, you know, we continue to get the compliance that uh, that is, uh, you know, something that will help us to do our jobs. Well, as I said, Auditor, there's been a lot of resistance and, uh, to what you're doing, sniping at you for doing it. You know, when you testified before a legislative committee hearing back in March, you called at least some of that resistance, quote, deeply, deeply disturbing, end quote. Why do you feel that way? I mean, maybe they feel you're just grandstanding for political reasons. Here's why I feel that way. When the legislative leadership team resists an audit by our office, they are not resisting me personally or anyone that works in my office. Who they are resisting and denying access to is everybody right at home, you, the taxpayer. It's you they're telling that they don't want to have access to how they're spending our tax dollars. That is disturbing on many different levels, John. And to have this continued pushback, uh, to have the Constitution Constitution raised as you know one of their concerns about you know the, the constitutionality of this the Constitution is there to protect we the people with a government that is all times required to be accountable to us we the people and what they are doing is they are saying oh no no the Constitution's there to protect the politicians from having to you know uh, do what we're yeah. supposed to we're supposed to do it's it's absolutely ridiculous that the taxpayers are not fooled. Folks at home are smarter than that. Well, I hear what you're saying, but I think a lot of our viewers at one time or another have interacted with local governments, say, and they they see that uh, the, the local board of selectmen, for instance, will say, well, we're going to have to go into executive session now to discuss a personnel matter or something that they are legally allowed to keep off the public record. And they do it privately. Should that practice end, or is this not an absolute principle you're articulating? So I'm not able to audit municipalities. That's not something that's under my purview. I will say the difference between how municipalities operate and how the state legislature operates is that those municipalities are at least subject to the public records laws and to open meeting laws. So there is a much higher standard set, even for those municipalities where maybe there are imperfections, maybe there are transparency challenges that do go on, but there are significantly 
more challenges happening within the state legislature where we get an F ranking with regards to transparency. We should not be getting uh, the least transparent state legislative ranking in the entire nation, John. That's unacceptable. We can do, do better. And is this audit going to solve all of the problems with transparency on Beacon Hill? Certainly not. It's just one way that we can get increased access to what's happening with our tax dollars and up on Beacon Hill. It is just an audit. It's not an FBI right. investigation to set up expectations. We've, right. we've heard all sorts of accusations about what people think this may or may not be. It's an audit. It's an audit. I, so I, yeah. I got to wrap it up, but sure. I, you, I should have mentioned this off the top. Before you became auditor, you served in both the House and the Senate. Which is least transparent? You know, I think that both have challenges. I can say that the Senate hides it better regarding transparency uh, challenges. Both definitely have challenges regarding okay. transparency and accountability that need to be worked on. It's my hope that both will operate with our office in a spirit of collaboration to help make government work better for those we all all seek to serve. 64 to 5, if you lose this, it'll be the biggest political upset ever. Folks at home, uh, you know, I have faith in the taxpayers of Massachusetts. Like okay. I said, this is a nonpartisan issue. This is about everybody getting access to what's happening with our tax dollars. It's about good government. So I do hope folks at home will support this, this initiative. Thank you for coming on to talk about it. We'll be checking in with you again before Election Day. Good luck. Thank you so much.